All right, engineers, we're going to take a look here at the heart. So if you look here at the heart, this is the anterior surface of the heart. This back here is the posterior surface of the heart. Inferior surface down here, this is the apex of the heart. And then up here is the superior surface, or you know, we actually say like the, the base is going to be pointing towards the right shoulder. So all right, so let's take here a look at the heart. We're going to kind of go over all the structures in the anterior surface here. So if you look here, uh, you can see this part right here, this little fatty pouching here. This is actually an oracle. And it's on, again, this is over here, this is the left side. And over here, this is the right side. So this is the left oracle. And the left oracle is kind of like a fatty pouch and it has some muscle tissue that also allows for it to kind of squeeze some of the blood into the atria in that area. Right behind this is gonna be the left atrium. And we'll show you when we take this, this piece off. Over here, we can see the right oracle. All right, if you look here, this is gonna be the pulmonary trunk. That's the pulmonary trunk. It's what takes uh, deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs to get oxygenated. All right, so that's why it's actually going to appear blue because it's going to be taking, again, deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs to get oxygenated. So it goes pulmonary trunk, and then it has this branch over here that we can see. This is actually going to be the, specifically the left pulmonary artery. We'll take a look at the right pulmonary artery here in a second. If you look here, we have a big, big uh, vessel coming out of the heart. This is going to be the aorta. So this is the whole aorta right here. This is the ascending aorta, this portion here. This is the aortic arch, okay, right here. And then you have three vessels that come off the aortic arch in order. So ready? This first one here is actually going to be called the brachiocephalic artery, okay? It splits into the, specifically the right subclavian and the right common carotid. The second one here is going to be called the left common carotid artery, okay? And this one back here, all the way in the back here, is going to be the left subclavian artery. All right, and then again, the, the uh, aortic arch will go down into the descending, or we actually say first thoracic and then abdominal, but we'll see that in other models. All right, now, let's go ahead and turn this a little bit. All right, guys, so now I turned it here to the right side. This is, this is the right side of the heart, so this is the right atrium right here. If you look here, we got a nice big vessel right here that dumps into the right atrium. It's a big systemic vein. This one right here is called the superior vena cava. So that's the superior vena cava. This vein right here and this vein right here, they actually merge together. They come, one comes from the right side, one comes from the left side. So this is the right brachiocephalic, this one right here. This one over here is the left brachiocephalic vein. Okay, so we got left brachiocephalic vein, right brachiocephalic vein come together and make the superior vena cava, which dumps into the right atrium there. You can see this little vein that's that kind of like nubbing off the back here. It's actually going to be feeding into the superior vena cava. This is called the azygous vein. We'll, we'll take a better look at it when I keep turning it around so we can look at the posterior portion of the heart and some of those vessels. So let me keep turning it around a little bit more. All right, guys, so if you see here, we can still see a piece of that aorta. Again, that's going to be the descending aorta. It's going to go down to the thoracic aorta down here. Then you can actually see nice, nice view here of the pulmonary arteries. This one is the right pulmonary artery over here, and this one over here is the left pulmonary artery. So again, those are deoxygenated vessels. Remember that they're taking blood to the lungs to pick up oxygen. That's why they appear to be blue. So most people will be like, oh, these are the pulmonary veins. No, they're the pulmonary arteries. Arteries, by definition, take blood away from the heart. Veins take blood back to the heart. And then the veins that come back from the lungs are going to be oxygenated. That's why these ones are the pulmonary veins and they're red. So don't get that confused. Again, these ones over here are the pulmonary veins. This would be the left pulmonary veins. Left pulmonary artery, this one right there, right? Left pulmonary artery. Over here is the right pulmonary artery. And down here are going to be the right pulmonary veins. All right, and again, you can actually see that vein that I was showing you before. This one right there is the azygous vein. That one right there and it actually comes up all the way from your actual um, your common iliacs it can bring blood all the way up and bypass the inferior vena cava we'll talk about that with its relationship to pregnancy in uh, one of the other models again azygous vein there and again we're look, taking a look at the posterior portion of the heart now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it back over and we're going to take a look at some of the vessels of the coronary circuit I guess right, so now we're here again back on the anterior aspect of the heart again what we're going to take a look at is the coronary circuit now the coronary circuit, I'm gonna show you that after when I take this piece off, you're gonna be able to see two arteries coming off of the aorta. And they're the first ones to come off of the ascending aorta, actually. It's the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. We have a video uh, in physiology where you can actually see the circuit in more detail also, but this is gonna, we're gonna go over the anatomy here. So if we look, you can see this artery right here 
It's going to be coming all the way down here. And this one is actually going to be the anterior interventricular artery right there. Anterior interventricular artery, but they also can call it the left anterior descending artery. Okay, this is one of the most common areas, about 40% of the myocardial infarctions actually occur within this artery, well, due to the blockage of this artery, okay, because it supplies a good chunk of muscle, supplies the anterior walls of the ventricles, right, of the left and the right, and it supplies the actual anterior wall of the ventric interventricular septum. Another branch, so again, this is actually going to be, this artery right here comes off of a specific coronary artery, and that is the left coronary artery. So remember, left coronary artery gives way to two arteries. This one right here, anterior interventricular, again, or we can also call it left anterior descending. And the other one is going to come off of the side over here, and that's going to be this one right here, number 11. That's going to be called the circumflex artery. So the circumflex artery actually kind of wraps right around this auricle, can supply a little bit of the, the atrial uh, muscular wall, and it can supply some of the lateral walls of this left ventricle over here. Okay? Not too common of an area for the uh, myocardial infarctions or blocks, clots to form in that one. All right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, turn it back over here because now I want to cover the veins in this area. So if we come back over here, what happens is the anterior interventricular artery, or the uh, left anterior descending, takes blood to the myocardium, drops off the oxygen. After it drops off the oxygen, it picks up the CO2, and it's going to have to come back through a vein. Well, the vein that it comes back through is this one running right next to it. That blue vein there, running right up this guy, is called the great cardiac vein. The great cardiac vein, which is going to be number uh, 14 here. Okay, so number 10 is the left anterior descending, or again, the anterior diventricular, and 14 is going to be the, the great cardiac vein. All right, and these kind of both run down what's called the anterior interventricular sulcus, which is like a fat-filled groove. Primarily, the anterior interventricular artery runs down, down this that little fat-filled groove right there, which is called the anterior interventricular sulcus. All right, so again, great cardiac vein. Now, if I turn it over here, go back to the circumflex artery, well, what vein over here drains it? There's a vein right next to him right there, okay? That's called the posterior vein of the left ventricle. So that drains the myocardium and brings the blood back, right? So that's that one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the branches off of the right coronary artery. So if we look over here, this right here is the right coronary artery right here. It's running all the way down, 155. It's running all the way down what's called this coronary sulcus. So it's running down this fat-filled groove here called the coronary sulcus. Then it has a branch that comes off of it, right? So this is one branch right here. And this is actually going to be number 8. If I turn a little bit better, you might be able to see it. This is number 8 right here. That's the marginal artery. So the marginal artery supplies the lateral walls of the right ventricle, right? And then, if you look here, it goes in, delivers oxygen to the myocardium. After it delivers the oxygen to the myocardium, picks up the CO2, and it's going to have to come back through a vein. Well, what vein does it come back through? It comes back through this vein, number 12, and that's going to be called the small cardiac vein. Okay? These ones, they don't talk too much about it, but this one's called the, it's just called the anterior cardiac veins. But that's the anterior cardiac vein, and then this one right here, which is kind of a little bit more important, is the small cardiac vein. All right? Now, what happens is the right coronary artery continues to track its way down through this coronary sulcus. And as it tracks its way through the coronary sulcus, it comes around the heart. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this heart off so we can see a better view of the, another artery branch. All right, guys, so let's track that right coronary artery. So we're tracking that right coronary artery back here to the posterior side of the heart. And as we come over here, it gives off this branch down here. Look at this guy. All the way down here, all this right here even a little bit of this part over here. This is all called the posterior interventricular artery. So again, all this puppy right here, and even a little bit of these branches off here. So that's the posterior interventricular artery, and it runs through a fat-filled groove, which is called the posterior interventricular sulcus. So now this is delivering oxygen-rich blood, and it takes it to the myocardium, right? So when it takes it to the myocardium, it drops off the oxygen, picks up the CO2 in the waste product, and it's going to come off of that capillary bed through a vein. Well, guess what vein is going to be running through? The one right adjacent to it. This one right here, 13, all this puppy right here, this is all called the middle cardiac vein. All this right here is the middle cardiac vein. All right, so middle cardiac vein, here's another piece of it. All that is the middle cardiac vein. Now, 
uh, all the middle cardiac vein, it'll also dump when it combines with the uh, small cardiac vein, the great cardiac vein, the posterior vein of the left ventricle. All of those guys will combine and dump that blood into this big, big vein up here called the coronary sinus. And then the coronary sinus dumps it into this cavity in here, or this chamber called the right atrium. All right, and then this is the inferior vena cava, this big gaping hole right there. All right, next thing. I wanna show you guys something really cool. If I turn the heart a little bit over here, you can kinda of see the posterior interventricular artery kinda of confuses or anastomoses with the marginal artery over here that we already saw. So here's our marginal artery and it forms an anastomosis, a collateral alternative channel for the blood to flow through with the posterior interventricular artery. So that's a cool arterial anastomosis. All right, so if we look here, we got the circumflex artery, right? This was the one of the branches off of the left coronary artery. Well, guess what? It can anastomose right here with the posterior interventricular artery. So there's an anastomosis between the circumflex artery, number 11 over here, and the posterior interventricular artery. So that's a pretty cool anastomosis. Now let's go to the anterior side to see some more anastomoses. So if I look over here, this artery coming off the, uh, another branch of the left coronary artery is the anterior interventricular artery. And it actually comes off, and look, there's another anastomosis with the circumflex artery. So this is an anastomosis between the anterior interventricular artery and the circumflex artery, all right? But then if we turn it over just a little bit more, again, we have the marginal artery over here. And the marginal artery, look, it anastomoses here with the anterior interventricular artery. So we have all different types of anastomoses here. And it's just really, really important to know that arterial anastomoses provide alternative or collateral routes for the blood to flow to, in case there might be some type of thrombus or embolus or clot of some form. It just ensures that enough oxygen will get to the tissue. All right, guys, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, this part off here so we can kind of look inside of the heart. All right, so let's take a deeper look inside of the heart. So if you look here, we have the two top chambers. This chamber right here is gonna be called the right atrium. This chamber right here is gonna be called the left atrium, right? So together we call them atria, right? Then if you look here, we have a valve, a nice little valve right here that separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. This valve right here is called the tricuspid valve, okay? And if you see these little cords coming down from that valve, the leaflets, this is gonna be called the chordae tendinae, the little collagen cords, all right? And they're gonna be anchored down by these muscles right here. They're anchored down by these muscles, which are called the papillary muscles. You can see that one right there, 154, and you can see the other one over here really, really well, which is anchoring down that chordae tendinae nice. All right, let's turn it over a little bit more so we can see a couple other structures inside the right atrium. All right, so now that I, we got a better view here, let's take a look. You can actually kind of see a little bit of scar tissue. If you remember from the fetal circulation video, there was a hole here, and that hole was called the foramen ovale, right? And it's what allowed for blood to get shunted from the right atrium onto the left atrium to bypass the pulmonary circuit. Well, after the fetus is born, this turns into a scar tissue right here, and it's now called the fossa ovalis. Again, it's called the fossa ovalis, and it's just this scar tissue right there, okay? And then if you look here, that number 26, that little black hole right there, that's the opening of the coronary sinus. So if you remember the coronary sinus, the one who collected the blood from the middle cardiac vein, great cardiac vein, small cardiac vein, posterior vein, the left ventricle, and the anterior cardiac veins, it's that that's the part that it's emptying into the right atrium. All right, and again, we already said tricuspid valve here. We already said the chordae tendinae there, and we already said the papillary muscles. Um, and then again, this whole chamber down here is the right ventricle. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look here. If you remember the ventricles, the ventricles are your pumping chambers. So they're the ones that are designed to contract and pump blood out of the heart. So what they do is they pump blood up through this pulmonary semilunar valve, okay? This little, this little crescent shaped, looks like, you know, looks like half a moon, right? So that's again, it's your pulmonary semilunar valve right there. And if you remember, we already talked about this, it goes up into the pulmonary trunk, now here into the pulmonary arteries, right? Elvin, if you look right here, I'm gonna turn a little bit more for you guys. You can see this little structure right there, that little white structure there. That is called the ligamentum arteriosum. If you remember when we did fetal circulation, it's called the ductus arteriosus, and it's a shunt that shunts the blood from the pulmonary trunk into the aorta to bypass the blood going to the lungs. So but whenever the uh, baby is born, it turns into a ligament to close that hole off, right? And again, becomes the ligamentum arteriosum, all right? 
So now let's go ahead and turn it over more so we can see the left atrium and the left ventricle over here. So if you look, you got that big hole right there. That's the opening of the right pulmonary veins. So the blood that's coming from the right lung is actually going to empty into the left atrium over there in that hole. And then if you look over here, we got these two little tiny holes over here. This is coming from these veins right here. That's actually going to be the opening of the left pulmonary veins. And they're going to be taking blood from the left lung and taking it and dumping it into the uh, left atrium. Again, remember that this left side is only getting oxygenated blood. The right side is, get, is having deoxygenated blood. So oxygenated blood here gets pumped down right through this valve right here. This is called the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve. right? Then it has these little collagen cords dangling down from the leaflets, which are going to be, again, are called the chordae tendinae. Then if you look right there, 154, you can see the papillary muscles right there, which anchor the chordae tendinae down. All right, guys, so what I wanted to do is I want to take another view right here to look inside of the ventricles. You can see this little this valve right here. This is called the aortic semilunar valve. So again, the aortic semilunar valve is what prevents the backflow from the aorta into the left ventricle. So I just want to give you guys another look at that. That's your aortic semilunar valve right there. And if you look, you see all this thick part here, this structure. This is called the interventricular septum. And certain types of uh, defects, and like the tetralogy of out, there can actually be a little, a little septal defect there where actually blood can jet between the two. All right. Now, next thing is if you look here, uh, which we can kind of highlight all of this muscular layer, which again is made up of cardiac muscle, right? So all of this is cardiac muscle right here cardiac muscle, cardiac muscle, we give that specific layer a name and we call this part the myocardium. All right, But lining the internal chambers of the heart, which can be any part, anything lining the internal chambers of the ventricles, any internal chamber of the atria, and even lining the valves, contains a uh, simple squamous epithelial tissue, which is actually going to be consisting of a little bit of areolar connective tissue, and we call that endocardium. All right, endocardium. And again, it lines the internal chambers of the heart and the valves. All right, so again, guys, we can see the anterior part of this, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece off here so we can kind of look at some of the more internal structures inside here. So if you look, there's actually going to be these little muscle linings right here. So little muscle tissue right here in the anterior walls of the atria. And they're kind of hard to see. It's actually kind of looks like someone combed them. They're called the pectinate muscles. So pectinate muscles are up here in the anterior wall of the atria. Right? And then down here, you can see all these gnarled, irregular fibers of muscle. This is called the trabeculae carne. And the trabeculae carne is only in the anterior walls of the ventricles. Again, so trabeculae carne in the anterior walls of the ventricles and pectinate muscles here in the anterior walls of the atria. All right, so now the last thing to kind of wrap everything up for the heart, guys, is if you look, the outer layer of the heart is actually consisting of a specific type of tissue. They actually can call it mesothelium. And what it's made up of, it's actually the outer layer is actually called the epicardium, but it's made up of simple squamous epithelial tissue with a little bit of areolar connective tissue. And it's again, it's going to be covering the outer part of this heart right here. All right. So if you remember in our videos on structures and layers of the heart, we go into more detail on that. But again, just showing the anatomy here, this outer layer of the heart is going to be consisting of epicardium, which is made up of simple squamous epithelial tissue, a little bit of areolar connective tissue. And again, you can call that mesothelium. All right. That pretty much takes care of everything for the heart. See you, Ninja Nerds.